I had carefully avoided all so-called soap operas. And when I did get involved, I always knew my out date with my in date. And uh, Dark Shadows appealed to me because, number one, I didn't have to sign a contract. Later on, I did, though, and I got out by offering to punch the producer in the mouth. And he laughed. He said, I've never been asked to cancel a contract on such a basis, but it was true. I was trying to get home for my kid's graduation, and she had the lead in the senior play at Sam High, and I couldn't get out because they'd written me ahead, you know. But we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun tearing the lady director apart. She used to get mad at me. I threw scripts at her because I, I'd memorize, and then they'd cut and memorize. Everybody else could read the damn monitors, except me without glasses. I couldn't see the damn thing, so I had to memorize. When the writers liked you, they wrote tons and tons of lines. And I don't know if in a half hour, was it a half hour or an hour? It was a half hour? Well, uh, if you figure there are maybe seven, eight characters in that particular segment, and you have a big scene, or maybe two in the segment, you know, to do about uh, 22 and a half minutes of the half hour, the rest is commercial, you wouldn't think you would have that many lines to say. And that's what they do in these big hour soaps now. They're really divided into either five, ten minute segments or four, fifteen minutes, whatever. Uh, you, so that the burden of memorization is not endlessly on one or two characters. Not Jason McGuire. No, he was loved, beloved by the writers. And fortunately, it was something I understood. It was an experience, that's all I can say. And it turned out to be pleasant because of this Dark Shadows group, that's all. Every time I said, Willie, Carlin couldn't keep a straight face, and he would break up and we'd have to start all over again. But there was a funny thing that happened there. I remember they would shoot, and then they would stop for the commercial break. And uh, something had happened, I don't know. I guess it was Willie had broken into the local drugstore and was either taking blood samples or some damn thing. And uh, Mitch Ryan, I don't even know what the hell he played. Was he a detective, a policeman, or something? I've forgotten what it was. All I heard him say was, uh, well, how did you know? that this sort of thing happened. And I heard him say just before the commercial, well, I was um, watching them on the microphone, sir, and uh, I could tell. And then they cut. And it was a whole set away from mine. I said, watching them on the microphone? And he hollered, well, you got to hear what the little bastards are talking about. And then they came back up. And <laughs> <coughs> couldn't stop him. And we hadn't. Well, we had a lot of obscenities going on because of the damn nature of the cows lying in the fields, sucked dry of blood and of sheep going. And well, my fondest memories of Dark Shadows are really Joan and John Carlin. He, I don't know, I thought he was going to wind up playing me because every time I used the brogue, he would try to use it back. And I'd say, no, no, only one of us. You get bitten. And I talk about it, <laughs> the way it was. And then I, I used to, you know, I'd play that he was mine. Put an arm around and say, Willie, no, listen, you got to, here's what you're going to have to do. And he'd look at me, and that was the end of the scene. He just could not keep a straight face. All we did was laugh. I had a good time. It's been a lovely, a lovely road to hoe, as they say. I wish it were back. I wish we were doing it. Because in the early days, we really acted. We didn't, you know, we weren't fearful. We played fear, but we acted. John and I, man, we had scenes that went on for an awfully long time, and they had to be very, very carefully uh, documented in our souls to, in order to get through the damn thing. But Mitch Ryan was watching them on the microphone, and he had, trying to hear what the little bastards were <laughs> talking about. <coughs> you reminded me now when you were sitting there, like, that, that, uh, that tavern where everybody met, 
whatever it was, oh, the whale, the, what was it called, a blue whale or a whale or some sort of a whale. The sets were terrific, you know. It was a great little studio to play in, and it was, except for the memorization at night, it was mental prison until you were finished with it. <laughs>